also, um, uh, you know, it seemed like a worthy subject, but even more is that I, when I re began to read about him, I found out that he was a really unique individual in terms of he was a very playful. And um, there was a, um, a series of, there was very little footage of him at all. Um, and he was very shy. He didn't write a book. Um, you know, I think in terms of why don't we know about him compared to other people. Um, but the um, IEEE, uh, which is an electronic the Institute for Electronics and Electrical Engineers, a professional society, they did an interview with him in the 80s. And there were a couple of other interviews with him in the, in the 80s too. Um, and um, the, it was at his house. And he was, a, um, he was an inveterate inventor. He not only had the mathematical school skills, but he was also, he loved to build things. And he had the ability to do that. And so he built all sorts of things. And so um, this interviewer came to interview him and the interviewer wanted to talk about how he came up with certain theories and things. And he just wanted to show various things he had built, which included, um, you know, a juggling WC fields and a flaming trumpet and a chess playing machine. And so he, you know, he built all these things um, that, uh, you know, just a, a showed a, a sort of playfulness that he had this curiosity of a child that he never lost. And sometimes it revolutionized the world and sometimes it made a flaming trumpet. And so to me, this, and again, this sort of, it, you know, it's somewhat related to the bigger issues we had, we've talked about of, you know, pursuing pure science and the reasons for doing it. And Shannon epitomized for me, somebody who just, you know, he did, he pursued things out of just curiosity, this child, this childlike curiosity, and it had tremendous results. So he, he also, after, and I think that's another reason he's not so well known, is that after his paper in 48, um, he sort of threw this down as a challenge to people to try to prove it, to try to work out certain things. And he, um, uh, he did some work on it as well, but then he, he sort of got interested in other things and didn't really pursue it as much. Um, and so he got interested in um, chess. And so, uh, in fact, Alan Turing came to visit when he was at Bell Labs and they were both working on top secret things and dealing with cryptography. So they didn't talk about cryptography, but they both began to talk about chess and about the fact that, so again, this is in the 50s, early 50s, um, could a, you know, would a computer ever be able to play chess? And so Shannon actually wrote the first paper about how a computer could play chess um, and, uh, and built a primitive machine. It, couldn't, it could only play six moves because the computers didn't have that much capability at the time. Mm -hmm. But he, he built the first, uh, you know, at least one of the first computers that could play jazz and wrote the first paper that I actually, I met um, some of the uh, people at IBM that made a Deep Blue. So you know, Deep Blue was the computer that IBM made that was the first computer to, to, to beat a, a world champion, a grand champion. So it, it you know, it, it, it uh, you know, famously um uh won the grand the, the, you know the, the grand championship of chess um and uh he said that basically um everything in you know still in terms of um computer chess goes back to shannon's paper basically that he laid the way for that so he built that he built a, you know a, one of the most one of the first uh, probably one of the first um uh artificial development device de development, artificial intelligence devices of a little mouse that could find its way through a computer. Um, he, um, uh, then he got very interested in juggling and unicycles. And he uh, came up with a mathematical theory of juggling. He built unicycles. So he just was sort of extraordinary and, and he was very playful. So to me, um, again, I got interested in the idea of this film, you know, first of all, I mean, to let people know what this man did, but also as a model of how. And so um, the film actually is, a, I, I ended up doing a real hybrid film. And so where I 
was able to I, uh, sort of recreate the interview. I mean, there was no footage, but I, I had this text and I sort of wrote a script based on that, um, you know, as if we were doing it and, and found somebody, had an actor, and we were able to film actually in uh, Shannon's house and we were able to get a lot of these devices. Some of the things he built were at MIT Museum and in various homes and you know, the family had them. And so we recreated the, whole, the house in the house and uh, used this interview, uh, you know, as the sort of core of the film, which was to really get the sense of Shannon as a person, and then and then have other people talk about uh, talk about him and and illustrate some of the things he did. So, so that film, which is, is called the Bit Player, um, was something that I was working on, you know, uh, for a couple of years after that. Now um, and premiered last year at the World Science Festival and it's actually now out on Amazon Prime and on Curiosity Stream. So um so that's you know that was my last big effort. <laughs> what was the scientific theory for juggling? I'm curious. Well uh yeah he he you know he looked at it from a mathematical perspective of like you know uh, as he said you know uh how long the ball is in your hand how long the ball is in the air you know, gravity, mm. the size of the ball, as he said, even, uh, you know, how many hands, uh, you know, the speed at which you throw it. So, you know, the, you, those are the different parameters that you can play with, you know, is the, 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 the theory of like, you know, how high do you have to throw it, the speed, you know, um, the number of balls. And so the, the, the idea of how could you come up with a theory of, uh, you know, was there a, a prediction for how many balls you could juggle or what speed you would need with how many balls and things like that, what what height you should do it at, what speed you should do it at, you know, those are all the parameters that he was playing with, and he, and then he built this mechanical W. C. Fields figure that actually juggled. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. That's it's amazing how you can how you can take things like juggling or chess and solve them with basic math equations yeah yeah that's exactly it i mean thank you that's and that's the you know that's the real genius is how do you translate something like that into uh into mathematics that can be useful and mm -hmm. that's what uh you know that's what shannon did is he in some sense the one of the the genius things of of information theory is that he was able to abstract from the complexities of the content of information. And so the content doesn't matter. That was, you know, you know, we're never going to come up with a theory of, of information that could account for all the meaning because, you know, you can have, you know, every book has different sentences and you can't, you can't measure the meaning, but what you can measure is um, the, um, what you can, what you can measure is the uncertainty, the intrinsic, you know, how much of, of, of something is new, how much makes a difference, you know, and that you, that you can measure and, you know, uh, it allows you to uh, do so many things like compress it or like, you know, compensate for errors. So, you know, he, he, it was this abstraction of information separating meaning from, um, you know, an intrinsic thing that you could actually deal with. And, you know, it actually has had so many, it has so many consequences now in unexpected fields. I mean, when it first came out, there was a big move, you know, people, uh, you know, uh, just were like jumping on this idea of, you know, using it for everything, you know, gardening and this and that and landscape design and architecture and, you know, everybody, you know, uh, in, in, the, in the social sciences, uh, we're all excited about this idea and using it. And, and Shannon sort of pulled back and he famously wrote in a very a short paper, you know, where he said people should get off the bandwagon that this is, you know, we're, this is a very specific theory and we're still working out the details and, you know, we need to, we need to focus on that first. Mm -hmm. The irony is now it's continuing to have incredible amount of applications un unexpectedly. And so as, you know, as varied as um, uh, in genetics, where um, when we, you know, it's interestingly, I mean, relating to something I was telling, talking about before is, you know, when you do it, when you try to sequence genes, 
we can't technically still, you can't basically do the whole thing in one strip. You can't, we, we can't technically get a whole strand of DNA. So what they do is they do it in segments. They have to break it up and do it in segments. And then the question is, how do you put these segments back together again? So that you're know, in the right order. And it turns out that they're doing it using, they're using uh, Shannon information theory. It becomes an, incredible, an, an, an integral point, an integral tool for how to see how these things go back together again. So he's actually having you know, uh, a role. In, I mean, information theory is important there. It's turning out to be information uh, in physics has turned out to be a very, very important concept. And for, for a long time, the physicists didn't care about it at all. Mm -hmm.